Good evening YouTube viewers and subscribers. So what I have here today is the OS FS48 Surpass engine that was given to me that had that was in a crash or was damaged had a crank, uh, the crankcase was cracked and destroyed because what had happened was uh, the crank pin sheared off the engine and blew the connecting rod through the bottom of this case. So, so I got the crankshaft in the mail today and check out how old this crankshaft is. I mean you can just kind of tell by the packaging this thing is ancient. Uh, so I've reassembled this engine. Um, one of the things that I really didn't purchase for this engine, I did buy a new case. It hasn't arrived yet. Hopefully it does arrive. I'm pretty confident that this JB Weld will, will work and be okay, so maybe I bought a case and I really didn't need to. Um, but one of the things that I didn't really think to buy that I should have, which was really kind of dumb on my part, was a new connecting rod. They are available in Japan. Uh, Tower Hobbies says they're on back order till like October. So I, I could have and should have bought a connecting rod also because why I'm saying that is that's what went through the case and it turned out that there was actually some damage to that connecting rod. It wasn't really visible but when I put the engine together the first time and would rotate it through I could feel binding as I rotated it through. So I ended up having to take it apart again and I was kind of trying to lay it on a table. I don't have a surface plate or anything like that and the connecting rod is not exactly, you know, one end is thicker than the other so it's not like they're going to sit flat anyway. And then one side, the part that connects to the piston is, is cut out a little bit more than the other side. So it's not like you can just lay them on a table and, and hope it's right. But I could at least lay it on a table or a, a piece of metal and see that it was bent a slight amount. So I took a punch and a ball peen hammer just lightly kind of tried to straighten it the best I could. I think these connecting rods in general are probably pretty pretty soft material because they're not really meant to be bent like that. They're, you know, their strength is this, is this way. So I've straightened it to the point where it's not binding. I mean when I had the head off and I would rotate this through it was binding so much so that it was pushing the sleeve up and it was pushing the sleeve out. That's how much it was binding. So I've got it straightened to the point where it doesn't do that. It's not perfect, but it'll work uh, for now. And I did not buy new bearings for this engine because this was really just kind of an experiment. Can I seal the crankcase? Will it run? That type of thing. Now, if it turns out that all the other components of this engine are okay, it seems like a low time engine, then maybe, and that crankcase comes in, maybe I'll get a new connecting rod and put the crankcase in there, put new bearings in there. But this experiment is basically just, could I make it run with this uh, patch here? And, you know, so, and I end up having a purchase. So the things I purchased so far are a complete exhaust from Magnum or ASP from Mike Goes Flying. I had to get a new, a crankshaft and then of course I bought the crankcase which has not arrived yet. Uh, it's missing one screw here on the rocker cover which is not a big deal but uh, this engine just I don't know the history of this engine but it just really wasn't in very good shape. I mean when we looked at it initially it looked like a very low runtime engine but man this thing is just really not in good shape. It's scuffed up it's it's just nasty. Uh, the spray bar jet was completely clogged. It was nasty, so I had to clean that out. I didn't put this in a parts cleaner. I just was kind of doing the minimal amount just to get it operational. But I do have it to a point now where it should run. And one of the things that I always do, whether it's a two-stroke engine or a four-stroke engine, when I'm at this stage of rebuilding an engine, just about to take it out and put it on the stand, one of the things I do is it's kind of an air leak test or I guess you could call it sort of a pseudo leak test and what I do is I, I connect a fuel tank up and I just see if this will actually draw fuel. Draw fuel into the fuel line and hold it. That's what I'm looking for. Now this test on this particular engine is not going to test the leakage or lack thereof here because we're only talking the head on a four stroke engine. But what I'm going to do here 
is I've got my carb open two and a half turns and I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my put this at full throttle and I'm gonna prime the engine and I'm just gonna see if it draws fuel and holds it but I want to zoom in here so you can actually see the fuel in the line and I'm gonna have to hang the engine off the side here so I can rotate the prop through but so hopefully you'll be able to see this so I'm rotating it through now the fuel is in the line right now I hope you saw that and it's holding it's not drawing back now if I let my finger off of here we should see a whole bunch of fuel come out which we did so this engine will prime it doesn't have an air leak, a leak in the valves or anything, because if it did, if it had a leak here in the intake manifold, the carb, or the valves, it would not pull fuel and hold fuel like that. So now I've already got a little bit of fuel in this engine, which is not a big deal because I plan on running it tomorrow anyway. But if I rotate this through, I can probably purge most of that stuff out. So anyway, this engine is in a state where it's ready to be put on the stand and run. Now... Uh, the fact that it's got bearings that need to be replaced, a questionable connecting rod, the question many of you may be saying, well, first of all, is, is it going to run? And my answer to that is I'm absolutely certain this engine's going to run. Will it run well? I think it'll run okay. It may not, I don't know if that's still that slight deformation in the connecting rod or the imperfection of the connecting rod will impact top RPM at all, but will it impact longevity of the engine? Yes, there's probably a really good chance that it may impact the longevity of the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this thing on the stand, get it up to operating temperature, tune it, do some tack readings, my normal thing, and then at the end of that run I'm going to determine whether or not uh, I'm going to actually continue on with this engine, put the new crankcase on there, maybe purchase another connecting rod. I'm already into this thing over $100, and the engine was given to me because I also had to buy, that's what I forgot, I also had to buy a high-speed needle. So between the high-speed needle, um, the exhaust, the crankcase that hasn't come, and the new crankshaft, I'm already in this thing over $100, which is... Uh, you know quite a bit now a new connecting rod is probably seventeen dollars it said so I mean yeah I wouldn't be hurt too bad but then I gotta add bearings to it also and that's another fifteen dollars or so so I'm looking at almost putting as much money into this engine as I could buy one on eBay because there's been several on eBay listed recently for you know low time or even new in box because I was seeing new in box ones selling for around 150 so I mean by the time it's all said and done I'm going to have, you know, that amount in this engine. So, eh, it's one of those things where it was a fun project, but it's kind of a money pit too. And that's kind of what you have to weigh the pros and cons against uh, when you do something like this. So anyway, the next video of this engine will be me out running this, and that's probably going to take place sometime tomorrow.